Elaine DeRay, Dr. Elaine DeRay, and you probably recognize or be familiar with that name. She is coming on the 20th of April, which is the third Thursday in April, to speak to us at uh, 8 o'clock at the Clare Education Center. And she's going to be talking about the notable no-nos, another very well-known family from um, Ennis. Uh, she wrote a book about them, and it's a fascinating family history. So anybody that would like to attend, we'd love to have you there. Um, and we'd love to see new members. So if you are interested in getting involved, by all means, please join us um, for our talks that we do advertise them in the Claire Champion. As well as that, there are um, possibility of genealogy, beginner genealogy courses through the local um, the education training board there on the Quan Road. So if you are interested in getting involved in a genealogy course or a local history course, um, or even doing some data, um, some transcription um, uh, work or data, you know, work in your family history, by all means, uh, give them a call. And based on numbers, they can run courses and we would be involved in those as well. So. Um, like that, we, we have over 30 publications now. This must be 34, 35th publication. It's a fantastic testament. It's all volunteer driven. Uh, nobody gets paid for these publications. They're all done by, you know, long hours and hours of work. Um, having done one myself, I know that. But it, it's fantastic to see the finished product and the, um, the benefit that it has to people from all over. And I'm sure the Hermitage book, as well as the Rasmus Smith book, will go far and wide um, uh, all over the world for people that are interested in it, as well as that. And I briefly mentioned that the Clare Library, if you are so inclined, it's well worth getting uh, into the Clare Library website and looking at all the transcription work and the, um, the various records that have been collated and extracted by a number of Clare Root Society members both here and abroad. Um, anyway, thank you very much for um, your support and for coming out this evening. And I would love to see all of you. Um, I don't know about all at once. I don't think we could, we could accommodate all of you on the, the 20th of April. But we'd love to see you if you are interested in coming to any of our meetings in the future, particularly the, the one next month. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jane. Uh, the second book that we're launching tonight is on Rasmus Smith. Um, this is a book uh, written by Lucy Lennis. Now, Lucy has a long association with their roots. Uh, I think this is her fifth book. Uh, she's talked about the aspects of Ennis and Bank Place and various um, aspects of Ennis. And this is another addition to her work. And we're delighted that she's present tonight. And we'll see if we can say a few words, please. Um, like Jane, I'm a boy with a smile for my life. I can hear the grandparents. The book I've written isn't anything as personal as the poverty book. People who lived in the areas of childish. Uh, are generally gone by now, so it, it isn't as personal. But it's loads and loads of history. You wouldn't believe how much history there was. We would go down on the road, go right down the road, down to the uh, major area. This history right at the centre. So uh, I hope you do enjoy reading that. Uh, I think a lot of you probably do know the Erasmus Smith House as Gosh the Mirror. I think I think a fair number of you here may well have been past pupils. So uh, you will have hopefully good memories of that. I'd like to thank Sister Candice Hanna uh, for all the help she gave me on giving me the inside track of what probably won't sit with the old house. So uh, I don't need any saying more than that. It's over to you too. Um, thanks, Lucina. And I uh, should mention that Lucina is not finished working for Bear Roots. Uh, she will now start on the history of Parnell Street. 
the major street names that has to be in public, by tables and with light, that you see has taken on the task. And if any of you have any of the forecasts or stories or anything to do with Panel Street or Mill Street, as I used to call it as a child, uh, we would be delighted to hear from you. Now, that's the two books mentioned, and uh, just to launch them formally, I'd like to call on the Mayor Bennett's Mayor of Alan Roy, uh, to do with the Ennis Mills uh, District. And I uh, should also mention that the district, Ennis District, is a great supporter of their roots and has helped us uh, through annual grants, which helps to bring these books to uh, publication. So, if I could call on the mayor, please, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harry. Thank you, everybody. It's an incredible turnout. You know what? It's, it's a bit more material because the Taj is out in force tonight, you know? And that is very, very important. Um, and I want to first start. I, I got the books in hand, and there's a reason why. I, I got them. I personally. I got the drafts back in the there you were here and you threw at me. You gave me ample time to read those drafts. I think you gave them to me back in November. I finally got to them in December when it was Christmas time and I could sit down and I wanted to fully read these books so that I appreciated uh, so that I appreciated all the history and the heritage that's contained within the pages that we have here today. So firstly, uh, thank you very and uh, thank you uh, Jane. Uh, for the invitation to be here as mayor of the Municipal District. I'm not here standing alone, clearly. There are other councillors in the room. And the Municipal Districts are very proud to continually support the Care Roots Society and their works. Very, very proud to do so. So what I want to do first then is uh, take the Erasmus Smith book. This was an interesting one for me to read. And I want to congratulate you, Lucille Ellis. It was just there sitting beside her earlier today. She can describe what she published a baby in time, she's around 55. It's five years ago, so well done on that. But I was very interested in this book because I did go to the Blanche Mirror, probably like many of you all, and I never heard she'd been there for five years about the history of, the, of, that, of that particular building. So it was very interesting to me uh, to read that because. Um, uh, we wouldn't be aware of the fact that there was such a, a definite sense of uh, colonialism and British influence in the establishment of that school, which in essence, you know, speaking to Lucille, she agrees with me, and I describe it as a kind of a prep school from predominantly Protestant land and gentry here in Ennis, so that they can move on to primarily Trinity College. So that, that was something that I never knew about in all my years there. And it was a very interesting perspective. All I can say is, when you do read it, you will realize how important the Sisters of Mercy were. Because after the, um, let's say, the change in use, it was used then by the Lord and Surveyors for a while, then it fell into jurisdiction, and it was thanks to the Sisters of Mercy that it became, I suppose, which is considered a very influential educational institution here in Ennis. I'll say that because I'm a graduate, and most of the girls in this town probably graduated there too. And we have had a huge influence, which is a really, really positive influence in our town. So, congratulations to see on the great work you've done on this your fifth book. Uh, turn on to the Hermitage book. I really enjoy this book. Um, and well done to Joe for putting it together. There's a lot of work that we did to this book. And I want to start by having you all realize that I could easily, with my family, have been a resident of Hermitage. Um, you know, and I think I would have liked to have been because I want to remind you of one of the first quotes that I pulled from the book that really resonated with me. And it's a quote by Marie Bow, daughter of Mike and Tom Murphy of 66 Hermitage. And she's recalling her fond memories of growing up in the Hermitage, or Hermitage, sorry, as follows, quote, it was a different time, it was a lovely time, an innocent time. And it is with great fondness and pride that I look back and I remember those times 
growing up in the great community that was Hermitage, the Taj. And the reason why I reflect on that is because I am also a child of social housing, in the sense that my parents would come from County Mayo with ten children in tow. I was one of, I was the first born in County Clare. But it was interesting, my mother died of rest her. She died last year at the age of 96. She was heartbroken and she realized that with so many children, she had a great chance of getting a social house. But we did not have this. <laughs> and so she approached the national um, teacher at Frank Hall in, in Quinn School. And Quinn was at risk of closure back then. Quinn is now a booming village almost a town. But back then in the 60s, she approached the national school teacher and he could clearly see a way of saving the school. And as a result, we became social housing tenants in what was the recently vacated um, retired doctor's house there in Quinn. It's kind of a prominent house as you go down into Quinn on the left. And the, the point I'm making is we were the only social housing tenants in Quinn. So when I reflect back on Marie Bo's comment, I realized that we were very fortunate, but we missed out on that sense of community that was represented by the people who were fortunate enough to be residents of Hermitage. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot in, and I've done a more in here, uh, forward uh, to this book because I really wanted to give it due respect. But there's so much in here, and I've mentioned this even to many wonderful people that live there and have contributed to the community life in Hermitage, such as Flan McMahon and his saxophone player, Fane, Josie Cronin and his bright red shop, serving up the best for beans, and Pauline McAllister's recollection of her dad playing with the cards in the dance band and her rounders, I remember rounders myself, was a sort of choice around Hermitage chefs. There's also a wonderful quote by Pauline McAllister. Quote, I believe we grew up within a sense of social control, looking out for each other. And another in Peggy and Teresa Herger's recollection of how it felt like going into heaven when their family received the key to 127 Hermitage. There's so much more in this book, and we were going to enjoy reading it. Anthony Moore, for instance, a self-confessed villain, I know he's at the mass, but I can't see you in the room, Anthony. You, you, um, you, remind, you remind us all of reading this book of the wonderful cultural and musical contributions from the Batman, the Borough, and the McAllister families, with band rooms just, such as Gunman, the Red Shadows, and the Still Strong in his brass band. So, all I can say is, well done, in the preparation of this book by the Caribou Society and to Joe Shan. It also, I suppose, is remindful that maybe we shouldn't have lost sight of those policies that were so good back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, which is where local authorities directly built social housing. So clearly, we might be returning to that, but without further ado, I want to say congratulations again to all involved and to all of those of you that have attended here tonight in such large numbers, and as the Mayor of the Innes Municipal District, I'm delighted to formally launch Hermitage by Joe Shannon and your residence of the house by Lucy Ellis.
if anybody would like to meet one of the authors, they'll be here at the top table if you want to sign a book for that. And uh, there's tea and refreshments for everybody in the back of the room, I hope. Um, now, the books are launched, the, the next task is to go and tell them.